Welcome. Today is Thursday, July 23rd, and this is Pittsburgh Opera's Pull Back the Curtain. Hello, Facebook Live uh, and Pittsburgh Opera family, um, and welcome to Pittsburgh Opera's first episode of Pull Back the Curtain. I'm your host, Rob Bolden, the Artistic Administrator, and we here at Pittsburgh Opera are thrilled to be bringing this series to you live. We are not reinventing the wheel, as you can imagine. We are in a terrible time um, with this pandemic and the social issues that are happening, but we wanted to find an opportunity to join the conversation, to connect with our audience, to embrace our audience and the arts community at large in a way that we can't right now. So this, like so many others, this is our medium. And so if you are joining us, thank you so much and welcome. We are thrilled that you are here with us today. So what is Pull Back the Curtain? We have uh, a limited run series of about eight or so episodes where we are gonna explore some of the aspects of the artistic or of the operatic world that for the casual fan or the aficionado might wanna learn a little bit more about. We've got some fun topics. We've got some fun guests coming up. We're really looking forward to reaching out to all of you, hearing from all of you, connecting with all of you in this, um, in this really terrible time as we are all walking through this together. So that brings us to today, episode one. We couldn't think of a better way to kick things off than to explore one of the true backbones of Pittsburgh Opera, our resident artist program. And in doing so, get to visit and catch up with a few of our, of our most recent uh, graduates who have gone on to some excellent work in the artistic world, in the operatic world, and we're really fortunate to be able to catch up with them today. But first, some of you may be asking initially, you know, what is a resident artist program? What is a young artist program? For those of you who know and love and support the Pittsburgh Opera resident artists, it's pretty easy. You know they come in every year, you support them, you love them, we cheer them on, we, we root for their performances. But Pittsburgh Opera is only one company in a landscape of companies that really support this work for young emerging artists. There are dozens of companies. Some of them operate on a summer season, the summer months where you have resident artists who, or young artists who come and they, they grow, they learn, they perform side by side principles and other year long companies such as Pittsburgh Opera, where the artists are in, in residence for a longer period of time, nine months say, where they as well, they come and they enjoy a, an opportunity to grow and perform working shoulder to shoulder alongside seasoned principals. What's interesting about Pittsburgh Opera though, is that we in a normal season, in normal times of our six productions, Two are dedicated strictly for our young artists. And we feel like that is a pretty unique opportunity to showcase these young, talented, fabulous singers year after year. You've seen them in productions, uh, most recently pieces like Little Women, Glory Denied, As One, The Long Walk, Richard the Lionheart. It could be contemporary, it could be a new work, a Baroque, but it's an opportunity to showcase these young singers in their own venue, in their own way. But beyond that, we have a real true dedication to making sure that their, their opportunities and their experience transcends just young artist productions. And they are on stage in roles, covering roles, principal roles on the main stage when we are at the Benetton Center. So it's a real privilege to be able to find these artists for those of you um, who might be wondering, any typical year at Pittsburgh, we have about six singers. And interestingly enough, a few years ago, we inaugurated 
a stage director position. So we are thrilled that we've been able to support a young burgeoning stage director alongside their young burgeoning uh, operatic singer colleagues. And we've paired them together for years, for the past several years. And in, some, and in many cases, it's always a thrill to be able to invite these, these, these talented artists back, either to direct a production or come back to our main stage. So we aren't here to hear me talk about statistics and the history of Pittsburgh Opera's resident artist program. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, my two guests. Uh, over my shoulder, you can see um, a couple of posters the Summer King and Hansel and Gretel are sort of a nod to today's two guests that will be joining me uh, this evening for our, for our chat here. Um, the first is Ashley Fabian, soprano, who was most recently here in the years 2017 to 2019. Those of you who are around saw her in pieces like The Long Walk, covering Adina in the Elixir of Love and singing in the student matinee. Um, afterwards, David Paul's reimagined Idomeneo, Glory Denied, as well. And then also the mainstay, on the main stage, Hansel and Gretel in the role of Gretel. Um, we are thrilled to have her with us here today. And um, before we bring her on, uh, I thought it might be nice to introduce her with a quick clip from her recent performance of Hansel and Gretel. Ashley, welcome. Are you there? Hi, thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's so nice to see you and thank you for being here. Um, it's so great to revisit some of those great clips and some of those great performances while you were here at Pittsburgh. Um, you look lovely. It's great to see you. And um, before we continue, I'm also going to introduce my next guest as well. So we'll bring you both on. My next guest is uh, Brian Vu. You all know him. He was here from 2015 to 2017. He was in productions such as Ricky, Ian Gordon, and Royce Vavrick's 27. He sang Figaro in the Barber of Seville during the student matinee. He was also part of productions La Traviata, Zalame, Ricardo Primo, or Richard the Lionheart, As One by Laura Kaminsky, and Little Women um, by Mark Adamo. We are thrilled to have him here, and as well, we're gonna bring him in with a quick clip, so please enjoy as we introduce Brian vocally before we get into the rest of it. Shall I try 
<laughs> How's it going, everyone? Welcome, welcome. Welcome to episode one of Pull Back the Curtain. Thank you guys for being here. It's so nice to see you both. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you are both coincidentally on the uh, West Coast, LA, right? Oh, we we both are. Okay. I didn't know that, but <laughs> that is good to know. Yes, yeah, LA, LA baby. Uh, I forgot to mention that in our pregame. That uh, yeah, you uh -huh. get out in LA, so you're sort of neighbors. That's true. That's amazing. Well, welcome, Ashley. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, let me start with you, since you are uh, you were here sort of first, if you will. But mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your experience as being a Pittsburgh opera resident, uh, resident artist. Um, what were some of the things that were so beneficial during that time that you know helped move forward your career and uh, just kind of got you in the game, so to speak? Oh my gosh, uh, definitely. Uh, so um, I was in the Pittsburgh Opera Resident Artist Program in 2015 to 17. And I would say just being on stage, all of the opportunities that Pittsburgh Opera gives you to be on the main stage in the Benidorm, um, in the resident artist shows, that is really what um, I think hones our craft and is the best voice teacher, if you will, um, is being on stage and figuring out your voice and technique and dramatic on the fly in the moment. Absolutely. Do you have a uh, do you have a memory or something, one of your favorite moments on stage, so to speak, while you were here? Um, you know, this wasn't on stage, but this was during a little women rehearsal so uh that uh, you you played that uh, note in the clip that we just featured which uh john brooke there is an interpolated g sharp and normally i i have that g sharp in space but this rehearsal i was feeling tired and just went for it without any fear knowing that i was dehydrated running on little sleep and it was the crack heard around the world <laughs> in front of all of the cast members and created team members. If anybody knows Laurel Samaritan or Leah Heater, anybody in that cast, just ask them about that day. It was a crack felt within bodies. That was my favorite memory. Well, you know, the thing about that is you're not the first person to have done that. And yeah. the thing about that aria, um, the legend goes, and uh, we could somehow confirm this at another point, but the legend goes that all baritones after the premiere have Daniel Belcher to blame for oh, yeah. the related high note. Because like you, he had a very high baritone extension. And mm -hmm. legend has it, he was just kind of messing around one day and popped off that note. And uh, there it went into the score as an uh, So, but, <laughs> you know, but that's the thing. You crack, you learn, you move on, you're good to go. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, and cracking is healthy for the body. Yeah, it's sort of, I feel like there's a level of humility after that because you go, know, yeah. what's left? You know, what's left? <laughs> yes, totally. so you're kind of in it. Um, Ashley, your experience, you you participated in a lot. You, you know, you had um, one of your sort of culminating moments was that role of Gretel uh, on the main stage. And interestingly enough, in that production, that was a production of all former and current resident artists. It was you, it was Corey Stallings, Craig Verm, Marianne Cornetti, um, Leah was also in the production. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about that experience and um, sort of leading up into that and your experience just in general at Pittsburgh. Yes, well, as Brian said, it is a really unique opportunity with Pittsburgh Opera um, in particular to get so many opportunities to sing on the stage. And um, for singing a, a lead role, um, a titular character in Hansel and Gretel on the main stage was such a big deal. And, um, and, to, and to sing it with all of the resident artists, it was such a family. It was so cool to be a, in that experience and to feel that sense of family and um, Pittsburgh Opera is so loyal and faithful and good to their singers. And that's why I think it's so important to support uh, companies like that right now. Um, but yeah, I think um, just being at Pittsburgh Opera, having that music staff and the administration to support you and to stand up for you and to allow you to focus for two years on your craft and your business um, was just a really special and unique opportunity. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and you mentioned the music staff. They are a truly unsung trio of piano. Mm -hmm. I feel lots of people who come here after one or two years, you can almost see and feel the growth because there's so much coaching that goes on. And I don't think that that's something that the public always knows. People come in sort of out of undergrad or grad school and feeling pretty good about what they are. They've landed at a company like a Pittsburgh and but then so much work happens. And for as an as a administrator and a former singer myself, it's so fun to watch that growth. Did you guys feel that in your own trajectory the time that you were here? 100%. It was like a um, warp speed transformation yeah. with, working with music staff at Pittsburgh Opera. Yeah. I yeah, can after after like eight years of school, you and all these teachers telling you, this is what you sing, this is what you do. And then you go into a situation, you know, as a resident artist and you think, oh, I already know everything or not necessarily everything, but you have an idea. And then coming into that situation and having brilliant minds shape, you know, the, the journey that you take um, was really, really special and humbling. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. It's it's fun to watch it all unfold over the over the time that that you all come in and and then unfortunately have to depart. Um, and and I have to say too, as a side note, um, those of us who work here year round and and for the public, there's a palpable difference when the resident artists are in residence. You use the resident artist program. Usually, the contract is September to May, and I can tell you, I can tell the public. It is such a, a pleasure when the, the resident artists are here because there's just such an energy um, that you all bring and in your case brought to the building. And uh, it's always fun to, to get that energy back. This year is gonna be very different, um, you know, in terms of how we're, how we're managing through all this, which sort of brings me to, you know, a, 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 you know another topic uh, that's sort of um, topic at hand, but, how are you all, um, how are you both kind of managing through this um, and going from, you know, from being sort of singers on the rise to just, you don't have a choice. The, the rug was pulled out in a way. So how are you navigating through this? Ashley, if, if, what, are you, what are you doing in terms of keeping that going? Well, it really, it made us all take a step back and reevaluate why we got into this business in the first place, you know, we, we are used to this exchange of energies between the performers and the audience, and that's been taken away from us now. So going back and, and really re-examining, okay, the reason I started singing was because it allowed me to express myself and to communicate in ways that I wasn't normally able to do. Um, so for me, I, was, I started exploring more um, different genres and, um, just sitting at the piano, spending more time singing and um, falling in love with music all over again um, and dedicating my time to continue to share art in any way that I can. We all have to kind of become like overnight experts on audio and video engineering. So we've been educating ourselves that way and trying to share art as much as possible because I think it is really important right now to continue to share that. Um, you know, it's one of the only things that's, that's keeping me going. Yeah. This time. I was able to, I, I've caught a couple of your, um, moments on Facebook recently. You've kind of delved into some pop music, some musical theater. Mm. Uh, I'm going to bring this into the stream and, uh, I'm just going to play a few seconds of it and, uh, we can take a listen, um, real quickly, just kind of what you've been up to. So I'm going to mute you guys here and we'll just take a, a quick listen to just a few bars of this. I used to be, although 
It's true, I was never attention sweet center. I still remember that girl. Bravo! <laughs> ah, that's gorgeous. Yeah, I could listen to it. I, I think it's really great, though. You're sort of, in a way, you've got to find those other ways to reach out and fulfill mm -hmm. your, your heart and your soul. Brian, tell us a little bit about your journey, if you will, because um, having been out of the program a little bit longer, um, you, uh, you started to get some traction. I had the pleasure of seeing you as Riff in the uh, mm -hmm. West Side, which in that musical, musical theater genre, you began to take sort of steps in a way. I saw you dance like nobody's business up in the <laughs> real life dancing with the stars. <laughs> but you, the, the, you, you had multiple engagements there with that particular production. Um, and so, but then obviously, you know, I, I think that tour, if you will, sort of papered off before all of the COVID and this pandemic, but again, how does that feel on the heels of all of that when things are sort of clicking along and now we're in this space where we have to sort of reinvent or reevaluate? Um, you know, how did that feel? Uh, it was uh, jarring. It was shocking. I, I mean, I was actually just um, kind of thinking of my, I guess, my uh, traction as somebody that was sprinting on a racetrack and then all of a sudden you had to stop running and that just like would send just some negative impact on your body. And that definitely sends a negative impact on my mind. I mean, I, I think I see for everybody in the world that has their ups and downs with the, the world and with the arts industry being shut down. Um, when I say I have had many, many ups and downs with uh, this pandemic. So that national, West Side Story opera tour that we like to joke about um, as cast members, that that had me traveling the country from most of 2018 um, and tapered off into a full-time opera career again. And I was supposed to be on the road actually from January, this January through November working. And as we all know, March is when uh, industries shut down and theaters closed. So what have I been doing to stay sane you know i i think and let me just jump in just for a second <laughs> i think you know it's not about i the thing about this for me is that there's so many paths at this point because in so many ways this journey is so personal because none of us can be together performing so mm -hmm. in, in an art form that is so connected and collective not only the performers but the audience members we thrive on sharing that collective experience. Now we're all kind of engaged in this art form or the arts in general on an individual basis. So before you answer, and I didn't want to necessarily totally diverge, but I do think that there are so many individual journeys um, that people are taking throughout this time. Would you, mm -hmm. I don't know if you agree. Yeah, no, no, no. Every it, It's just like, um, the artist's path. There is no journey that is the same. Every single journey is different. Um, and what matters is you being true to yourself and your own journey. Yeah. Um, art, art is such an individual thing. And, you know, I definitely closed up and uh, went hibernating, thinking, you know, feeling like my right to create was taken away until I was reminded um, no, I, I am an artist. I will always be an artist. And the point of being an artist is to express and to share with um, audience members and your network. And that really pulled me out of the funk that I was in. I agree. I think I love the sentiment of sharing because I've, I've, I've always had that philosophy that what, mm -hmm. what artists do is, you know, we rehearse and, and work and you you spend time in the practice room or the rehearsal studio, but then you you have to give it away at some point. You have to share yeah. it, that's, that's the point. Ashley, what do you think about, I mean, how do you feel about that as well? Because obviously you've been kind of delving into a couple of other things, um, in, you know, in addition to the Facebook presence and um, how do you, so you just kind of finished up at Des Moines, correct? 
Yes, I did the virtual season with Des Moines Metro Opera. Tell us we were more about to- that. How yeah. that. Well, you know, sharing just looks a lot different now. So we we were able, they had um, a fantastic director that was able to put together a scene from Cozy, Mozart's Cozy. And so everyone was able to kind of film their own section of that um, act one finale and put it together. And it turned out hilarious. It was brilliant. So we're able to collaborate in a different way now to bring those types of things to audiences. So the sharing is still happening. It just looks a lot different now. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I threw out a couple of questions to you guys ahead of time just to kind of, oh, wait, I want to throw this comment up there because I totally agree. Um, this is from uh, Amy Kelman. Um, Beloved FPO. Yeah. Yes, we, we miss live music. We more. did too. Uh, we miss making it. We miss giving it out to the world. So thank you for that comment. If, if anybody else has anything to share, please do. Um, but one of the questions I threw out to you was, in terms of being, um, you know, being a young artist, um, what are like what might be the biggest myth to being a young artist, if that makes any sense? Um, does that make any sense? Yeah, Ashley. yeah. Ashley, I mean, uh, yeah. Why don't we start with Ashley? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people have this idea that being a young artist, you get all these opportunities to sing. And I don't think they realize how much work goes into it and in into the background. Um, spending all of those hours in the practice room with the coaches and pianists and conductors in, you know, Bill Powers office. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of people and a Bill lot of people. Powers. also have, Yes. <laughs> thank God for Bill Powers. And um and they also have this idea that once you're in the Young Artist Program, your career is set and you're going to be um, on your way forever on this golden path. And that's just not the case. There's so much work that goes into the behind the scenes that no one really gets to see. There's so much struggle and um, email writing and traveling and financial struggles that you have to deal with. And so I would say that's a big myth around it is that you just you get in and you're golden, you have all these opportunities and you're set for life. And that's just not the case. Yeah. Brian thoughts. You know, I, I agree with everything that Ashley said. I mean, it's, it, it is an amazing opportunity of which there are very, very few um, young artist programs around the country and young artists, year long young artist programs at that. But that is exactly what people misconstrue is that once you get in it, um, you're set for an opera career and you only realize that it is the tip of the iceberg once you begin working in a young artist program, how much work is necessary to have this career. Yeah, absolutely. When you were here, both of you had an opportunity to participate in um, in the second stage project. As I said early on in this, um, in this live stream, uh, Pittsburgh Opera offers two two performances, two productions per season that are dedicated to the young artists. Um, and you both participated at different levels, um, and, or not different levels, but different different productions. We call that we've got the Kappa production in January, second stage in February. Um, but both of you had uh, integral roles in two pieces, Glory Denied for you, Ashley, and As One, Brian, for you. Pieces that are really um, of the day. They are, uh, I could use the word relevant and we could, but they are, they're poignant. They they hit on topics that need to be heard. They're brand new pieces. Brian, I'd love to hear a little bit about your experience with that, with As One, if if, uh, if I could. Yeah, yeah. So I, um, I was Hannah before and Laura Kaminsky's As One in my final year as a Pittsburgh Opera resident artist. And that opera was so revolutionary um, at the time. I feel like then, I I forget when it premiered. It was 2011, 12, 13, somewhere in there. But I feel like it was one of the very first stories of um, a transgender woman in, in mainstream opera, if you will. And I feel like at the time, the mainstream media, arts world, classical world, nobody was talking about that until this piece came out. So what what an amazing 
thing to to talk about and begin a conversation about the trans experience. And uh, we, we live in a blessed time now in 2020 where the trans experience is being discussed um, widely. And so that, that was amazing um, to be a part of, to put myself into Hannah Before's shoes and to, to really try my best to embody that trans experience of finding my truth and going after my truth. Yeah, I think that slot, that second stage slot here at Pittsburgh is a real, it's an opportunity because we can explore, we can explore topics of the day. We can explore topics that are controversial mm -hmm. or things that we might not necessarily talk about, which is the beauty of art in general. It's an, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. to in, incite a conversation about something and, and spark thought in, in a, in a world. And, and to your point, Brian, you know, now those, those topics are top of mind and it's, it really is a golden age to be discussing those things and those topics. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that piece has been, is very special and is seen a really has gotten a lot of play over the past few years. Um, mm -hmm. Ashley. Well deserved. Yeah, absolutely. Ashley, you had an opportunity to take part in Tom Chapulo's Glory Denied which uh, basically outlined the longest, um, longest held prisoner of war and the effects on family. And again, sort of maybe not every day, but topics that are not discussed every day. And uh, tell me about that experience of inhabiting um, his wife's shoes, if you will, in the younger self. And for those who don't know, the piece is split. Um, it's only two characters, but they're split in terms of the younger and the older version of each. So it's four singers. And Ashley played younger Alice um, in our production of Glory Denied. I'd love to hear your take on that and how its connection to the community and its poignancy um, as this art form continues to reach out. Yes, it was a very special piece and it was interesting to explore this character. You know, we look at someone back in in this time and she had a lot of um, responsibility and expectation put on her. Her husband, you know, was the longest held prisoner of war and she had to move on with her life, right? And so we, we tend to look at her in this history as kind of the bad guy for having him declared dead for moving on with her life and getting remarried and maybe being a little calloused. But it was interesting visiting that role and, and understanding maybe why she did the things that she did um, and maybe understanding that the reason we look at her this way maybe is because she was a woman. And um, it's opening up those conversations. It's really important to keep doing these operas that get us talking about these issues. And um, yeah, it was a really interesting piece. I really had a good time delving into that character. It was great. I, I, I truly enjoyed presenting it and being a part of that you know presentation and production. Um, before we kind of sign off, um, after on the heels of the, that conversation, um, let's bring in uh, a couple of clips here. I'm gonna start, um, we're gonna back up and start with Brian in As One. So I'll bring this into the stream and um, we'll take a quick listen. And on the heels of that, I will bring in uh, Glory Denied and watch Ashley.
bringing you guys all back up after a quick muted pause there. But that was As One, starring Brian Vu, along with other resident artist Taylor Raven that particular year. Mm -hmm. And Glory Denied, and alongside Ashley, was Terrence Chin Loy, Ben Taylor, and Caitlin Godimer. Two exquisite productions that we have had the pleasure of presenting and offering to our audience here at Pittsburgh over the past few seasons. Um, friends, it has been a true pleasure getting to chat with you, catch up with you, share some of your insights. Uh, we got another uh, nice comment here um, from Kelsey, who uh, used to be a member on the development staff here at Pittsburgh Opera. Thank you, Kelsey. Right. We do too. Um, so if, um, before I go, I would just say, I'm curious, one last question for you each. Thinking back to your younger self, what might be a quick piece of advice you'd offer your younger singer selves in mm -hmm. hindsight? I would say, <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say um, focus on your own goals and your own growth in your own time. Never get distracted comparing yourself to other singers. Everyone has their own journey and you're not failing if you're not meeting their goals at their time. It's beautiful. I would tell my younger self, it is, it is okay to want more for your artistic and personal life. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, friends, thank you so much for being here. To our Pittsburgh Opera family audience, thank you for watching and tuning into this very first episode of Pull Back the Curtain. If you are a, a subscriber, a donor, we thank you. If you are not and would like to be, um, over in the comments section, you can click, uh, click to donate. I know that that's been posted in there, so please feel free. Um, all arts organizations during this time are um, in desperate need to keep afloat, and we will, no question, because on the heels of this, we will all come through this together, we will all come through this stronger, And um, but we need your support along the way in order to do so, so we can come back and offer you that live presentation, that live music, that connection to art in general. So. With that, episode one, um, Ashley, Brian, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure catching up with you, um, and we will hopefully see you all soon, very, very soon. So, awesome. thanks um, for having us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Be well, everyone. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon.